Sunday is here, and I'm gonna steal a quote from my Uncle Tom on Brit's side of the family and say uh, that the first five days after the weekend are the hardest. We're on day number one. We got a step deck, 117D. Hook this up, we're gonna pull this all the way to Kenora and go grab us some culverts and bring them back here. Well, I'll bring them back to uh, Elder Shane, the town just next door here. I gotta find two risers though. So they want a step deck, but they want two risers. Makes you kind of wonder, why don't you just want a flatbed then? But hey, I guess I'll find out. Guess I'll find out. The answers all come in time. We're taking this trailer to Kenora, which is in Ontario. So we're leaving the province today. Very exciting. Very excitement. We're just turning on to uh, the perimeter. We're gonna head east down the Trans Canada. So we got a little bit of rain this morning, which was very nice for the farmers, I'm sure. I bet it wasn't enough though. We were supposed to get thunder showers and I heard a lot of thunder and I felt a few drops. We're in a little bit of a drought here in Manitoba this year. It's been really hot and dry. Very good for the motorcycle riders like myself. I've been enjoying the summer quite well quite a lot but the farmers however uh, have been struggling so a little bit of rain would help them out quite a bit it's supposed to be hot 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 again and this is July August is usually our hot month this is the pond where the geese and the ducks are been, have been having it out all summer let's see who's got control today The ducks! Go team duck! Alright. I guess the Canadian chicken cobras are gonna have to find another pond. Looks like the ducks are holding control of that pond. Good for them. Good for them. I know it must have been a hard battle. Those chicken cobras can get pretty violent. So it's about uh, three hour, is it a three, four hour drive? Four hour drive east, I think, to Kenora, I'm thinking. Uh, like I said before, we're picking up culverts and just bringing them back to Ildeshane, dropping them off, and that'll probably be the day. So a nice easy day for us today, just cruising. I don't think culverts will be too hard to tie down, as long as they're bundled properly. Kenora is about two and a half hours away. Two to two and a half hours, not four hours. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> so it's not even that far. Two hours there, we'll load up, maybe take about an hour, let's say, hour and a half. So it takes two and a half hours there, three, that's four hours. Two and a half hours back, five, six and a half, seven-ish hours, we'll have to stop for coffee on the way back. Seven hours and we should be back, unload there, then another hour, eight hours back at the yard. So between eight and nine hours, then my day should be over. That's, that's actually a pretty good day. That's a pretty standard good day. I usually work between, uh, oh, well, every day varies. It, it really depends on what I'm doing that day. Uh, sometimes I work an eight hour day, but most days are around eight to 10 hours, somewhere in there. And sometimes the days stretch out a little longer past 10 hours. All depending on what the day brings and what's needed. We're just gonna pull into the Petro Pass over here. We're at Deacon's Corner, just east of Winnipeg in Manitoba. I'm gonna quickly swing in here, make sure that we're all set and ready for the highway. This is a very popular tourist stop. It's the, it's right outside of Winnipeg. So most everybody that's either going to Ontario or coming from Ontario usually stops here. Usually. I mean, I'm talking cars. Semi trucks, a lot of them go past here. They stop on the west side of Winnipeg if they're going past. Uh, there's a Flying J truck stop, a Husky truck stop on the west side. I always went around to the west side because they have better coffee there at the Flying J. I love that bean to cup. But since I'm not going to the west side today, I'm going east. We're stopping here. If I can find a gear that wants to agree with me, there we go. 
There you go. You just gotta keep knocking at the door until you find one, right? People ask me if I uh, clutch, double clutch, or float the gears. I float the gears. I'm not gonna be double clutching all day, man. I'll have like, my left leg will be the size of the rocks, you know, and then my right leg will just be, <laughs> it'll be very disproportionate. No, 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 I float the gears. The, I use the clutch as little as possible. I choose this parking spot. This one right here, what does that say? Oh wow, do not stack Fort Severn. I don't think you should stack that one. Got this feeling. I think that's going to Fort Severn. Ah, pretty good feeling about that too. I'm not even straight in my spot. Ugh. Well, we're not gonna be here long. Okay, 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 I can't help it. I have to straighten out, I have to straighten out. I can't leave myself crooked even for two minutes. I'm not even going inside. I have to park straight. Have to. Everything's got to be neat and organized. All the time. Most times. My wife may disagree with that statement that I am not always neat and organized. So I don't really know what to tell you. Sometimes I'm neat and organized and other times... open leaving Manitoba. I wonder what they want. I'm empty so I'm assuming they'll just let me through I hope. I don't really got time for all your questions there guys. I got stuff to do.
don't say. You don't say. So welcome to Ontario, everybody. I don't get to come here all the time anymore. I really don't miss this highway, the 17 and the 11, going from Western Canada to Eastern Canada. I, I don't miss it. Not even a little bit, no. We've got about a half to a three-quarter mile visibility now. I can't even see what's at the end of the street. I can see that there's some trees or something there. But I can't quite make out what exactly is there yet. Now I'm beginning to see what's there. That's crazy. I wonder where the fires are burning. It's got to be pretty close by. Any of you live in Kenora? Any of you live around here or any of you under evacuation orders or anything? We're about to go over a bridge here. We'll see how the smoke looks out over the water. Even thicker. Even thicker. 
around the corner and uh, hey Timmy's no truck parking of course Yikes. 